whoa, guys, take a look at all these clocks. They're all in the wrong time, too. And it's currently 1.13 in the afternoon. Well, guess what? We're here for the ultimate clock winding video. I just got back from vacation yesterday, and I was out for nearly two weeks. And all these clocks have wound down. And as you guys can see, they're all on different times. Like that Howard Miller over there, that's almost at 10 o'clock. That one's almost at 12. These two I find interesting. These two are pretty much at the same time, which is kind of interesting. They're both almost at four. And the funny thing was, yeah, I got home yesterday. I didn't feel like winding any of the clocks. That one was still running. It wasn't on the right time, but it was running. And then it just happened to stop this morning, almost at four, just like that one was. But yeah, we're here for the ultimate clock winding video where we're gonna wind all my wind up clocks. Now, I do have a few clocks in my collection that are battery powered, including the Bulova and my analog bird clock. Those ones are still running because they're obviously battery powered and the batteries can last a lot longer than winding power. But yet winding power is better because it's renewable. Unlike battery clocks, when the battery dies, you can't necessarily replace the battery without throwing it away unless it's a rechargeable battery. If you're using a rechargeable battery, you can recharge it. However, winding power is renewable because all you have to do is wind it back up. So in this video, we are going to wind all my clocks and get them back, back up and running for my clock collection. So I think we're going to get started with this, uh, this Hershey right there. That was the first clock I got technically. And if you guys wonder why that is, just leave a comment or something and uh, I can answer why I say technically that was my first clock. But for now, I need to stop talking and let's just get into this winding video. Here we go. Let's kick things off by winding this Hershey bracket mantle clock. We'll open up the door and we're gonna use this key. This is the key that came with the clock. So we'll start with the left. Here we go. all set. Now we'll do the middle. All right, that one's all set. Current time is 1.20, so this clock is all set. Obviously, when I finish winding the clocks, we can't just let them go. We have to set them to the correct time. So that's our first clock, the Hershey, and that one's all set. Let's go on to our next clock. And next up, we're gonna wind this rare Howard Miller bracket mantle clock. And the reason it's rare is because of the design on the front of it. This is definitely one of my favorite clocks in the collection. So let's open up the door and let's get to winding.
Notice how I slow down once I start to feel it getting tight, and that's because I don't want to wind it too much and possibly break the winding thing. So sometimes it's okay not to wind your clock up all the way. In this case, I was able to wind it up pretty much all the way. It's just when it gets tight, you got to be careful. You don't want anything to break. Now, because it's 124, we got to set this to the right time because 10 o'clock is definitely not 124. So let's set it. All right, so it struck 10 o'clock. So what we're gonna do to speed this up, we're gonna put this on silent mode. And now we're gonna take the minute hand and we're gonna set it to 114. And then we're gonna unsilence the clock. So that way it does the 15 minute chime. So here we are at one o'clock. Now we set this close to the 15 mark when I unsilence it, if you're within one of the quarter periods, it will not uh, chime. If you have just passed one of those uh, quarter marks, like you're somewhere around here, but not within five minutes, it will chime when you start it up. But because we're within a few minutes of that quarter period, it doesn't chime. Now watch this. And when you unsilence the clock, the hour strike will uh, ring once or three times. So sometimes it's one time, sometimes it's three times. I don't know why it does one or three times. If you happen to know that, please tell me in the comments. I actually do kind of want to know why it does that. But because the time is 1.26, the clock was about 11 minutes behind, so we have to set it to the right time. So this clock is now all set, and you guys might be wondering why I'm not starting up the pendulum. This is not the location where I keep the clocks. This is just my filming space. So I gotta go move this back to where it's supposed to go and then I'll start up the pendulum. For now, we're gonna move on to the next clock. All right, we got another Howard Miller clock to wind here. This was the first tamper mantle clock I got from my collection and I bought it off eBay for a very nice price. Now you guys might notice something as well on this clock. There's a sticky note here. And if you haven't noticed in some of my other clock videos, Every clock in my collection I have has a sticky note on it, and that's to keep track of information about the clock and the dates that I bought and received the clock. For example, this sticky note here tells you the type of clock it is. It's a Howard Miller Timber Mantle. Got it off eBay. There's the model number. And I include the date that I buy it and the date that I receive it, too. So every clock in my collection has that, and that's just to keep track of when I get the clocks because, honestly... I kind of want to remember when I got the clocks because if I don't write it down, there's a good chance I'll probably forget. But anyway, right here we have this Howard Miller Timber Mantle clock and we need to wind it. So let's open up the access door and let's get to it. We'll start with the left keyhole. Here we go. You guys might be able to hear the ticking has started up on it again. It now has enough power to tick again. So now it's going to be running. Now let's do the right keyhole and then we're going to set this to the right time. All right, there we go. So this clock is now set. Let's do the uh, 12 o'clock chime. So here we go.
At this point, we're gonna silence it now so we can do one full turn because the time is currently 144. So if we set this about right there, now that clock will strike 145 and do the correct chime. Now don't forget, if you do set the clocks to the wrong chime time, the clock will automatically fix that. Fortunately, after it does the 45 minute chime, if it were to do it here, for example, it won't do the hour strike until it gets up to that, uh, that hour minute mark. So just keep that in mind. That's something really unique about these clocks. And it is now 145, so let's just set this to 145. And since it was on silence, you could hear that hour strike. Pretty much every clock that has a silence feature will do that. The only clock in my collection that doesn't do that is the grandfather clock. So this one's now all set to go. Let's get to the next clock. Let's take a break from winding mantle clocks and wind this Centurion 35 day wall clock. I typically like to wind this on the wall, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna do it here. Now you guys might also be wondering, why is there a tissue box on camera? Well, I'm gonna explain why right now. If I open the clock door, I can set it on the tissue box and uh, ensure that I don't break the door. Because this clock you're limited to is how, you're limited to how far you can open the door. If I take the tissue box out and I set it right there, that's about as wide as it goes and I don't wanna break the hinges on this, possibly damaging this clock. So if I put the tissue box here and just let the door lean on that, I can prevent that from happening. So anyway, if we take the key out, this is the key right here that came with the clock. We're gonna wind this clock, but before we do, first off, I'm gonna take the pendulum out, take the pendulum out, and I'm gonna set this to the right time because there's probably a lot of power left to power the, the gong chime. So here we go. Never mind, there is no power at all. I can hear it clicking. Not for the 30 minute mark though. Let's just leave it right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by winding the right keyhole. Here we go. All right, and there you have it. Now for these monthly wall clocks with these longer movements, it does take a lot longer to wind them. And as you guys saw, I had to switch hands because my right hand was starting to get tired. And uh, we just wound, that was the uh, clock power. That's what keeps the clock running. Now we're gonna wind the chime, which is the left hole. The right one you have to do counterclockwise, the left one you do clockwise. So let's get to winding this one. All right, and there you have it. As you guys saw, it did chime when I wound it. The thing about this clock is, if it does run out of power to chime, 
the gong hammer may get stuck at a position as you guys saw there. So when I saw it moving, I decided to wait to let that go ahead and do its thing. Now the current time is 155, so we're gonna set that to the right time. When I move this to the 30 minute mark, it should do the chime. There we go. It's a little slow. Typically this thing goes a lot faster when you wind it. Let's do the one o'clock chime. There we go. That was a lot faster. And then we'll set it to 156. At this point, I'm just going to close the door on this thing because I got to go put it back on the wall and I have to get the pendulum set back on it too. So for now, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. This clock is now ready to go. Just got to put it back up on the wall, put the pendulum back on, and then this clock is ready to run again. Let's go on to our next clock. And now we're going to wind one of the newer clocks in my collection. This is a Sly Triple Chime Mantle Clock. And we're going to wind this one up and set it to the right time. So open up the access door. And we'll start with the left keyhole. Here we go. Something you guys may notice is the right keyhole does not click when you wind it, which is kind of interesting. I don't know why that is, and this one I always like to be careful with when I wind because I don't think that's a good thing that it doesn't click. Let's actually wind it just a little bit more. Okay, right there. That's good right there. That one doesn't click, and I don't know why that is, so I'm always careful when I wind that one because this is a really nice clock. This was in used condition when I got it um, from the eBay seller, and it's running very well. So I want to keep this one in great condition. So for this one, we're actually going to turn, we're actually going to turn the hands backwards, and actually we might have to see how many times it strikes. So it's about two o four in the afternoon now. Yep. Okay. So we should be okay. Yep. Because it does listen. Yep. That's good. So now if we go right about here, and let's click this on, because it is on silent. That's because I silenced it last night because it was chiming. So we click this on. We'll do Westminster. Ah, see, it only did the 30 minute chime there. We're gonna use the silence trick to get this in the right spot. It's about 205 now, so we'll set that. So what's nice about this one, again, with the silence feature, when you silence and unsilence it, it goes to the next uh, the next quarter uh, chime movement. So in this case, as you guys saw, it did it only did the 30 minute chime there, and that's because it was it probably got off track somehow uh, earlier on. So I wanted to fix that real quick because obviously we want to get that on the right chime uh, sequence whenever possible. So this one's now wind. Let's. 
sorry, this one, I really cannot speak. This one is now wound up. So let's go on to our next clock, which will be the Howard Miller Webster. This right here is the Howard Miller Webster. This is a triple chime mantle clock, just like that slide triple chime mantle clock you guys just saw. These two clocks are very, very similar, not to mention they were near the same time as well when they wound down, which is kind of interesting that they kind of stopped right at the same time as each other. Definitely rather interesting to see. Anyway, we are gonna wind this clock, so we'll open up the top access door. And we are going to wind them. The keys are also very similar as well. See, here's this one, and then this is the key from so this one is for this one, and this is the slide triple chime. So they are very similar to each other. So let's wind the clocks. Here we go. All right, and there you guys have it. That was winding the Howard Miller Webster Presidential Collection. And actually, I don't know why I'm closing that because we do need to set this to the right time. So here we go. It's 212, so we're gonna set that there. And that should be correct because we just did the hour strike and the hour movement. So the next one should be the 15 minute chime. So this one's all set to go. Let's go on to our next and final clock. Can't forget about this one. This is the Sly Triple Chime Grandfather Clock. And we gotta wind it up. Got a few clocks. It's two fifteen. There you guys have it. Now for this one to start it back up, all we have to do is push the pendulum. And there we go. So that was uh, this clock. And I always like to set the key down here. All right, and there you have it. I'm going to set this to the correct time off camera just for privacy reasons. So thank you all for watching this winding clocks video. This was the ultimate one because we wound every clock. 
since uh, they all wound down for my vacation. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.